Today we're taking a look at the 2013 BMW 7 Series. Now this particular model is the 750LI, which means that we have the twin turbo V8 engine under the hood, and of course we have these long doors in the back giving you extra passenger room. This isn't an all new 7 Series, this is really just a mildly refreshed model from last year. So under the hood we have a completely different drivetrain lineup. We of course have a blunter nose here with the revised larger kidney grille opening and of course some more chrome and full LED headlamps. BMW is sometimes accused of making one sausage in multiple different lengths, but that works really well here with the 7 Series. These proportions are excellent and they're also very elegant thanks to this very long hood here which is designed to accommodate inline 6 engines, V8s as well as V12s. We also, of course, have this long body because this is the long wheelbase model, so we get these really long rear doors. And we have a real trunk back here, which is somewhat unique in this segment because the uh, Mercedes S-Class seems to have a slightly short uh, trunk overhang, and the Jaguar XJ has an almost uh, coupe-like hatchback-like profile going on. As you'd expect from BMW, there's a fairly extensive engine lineup in the 7 Series. Starts with a 3-liter twin-scroll turbo engine, good for 315 horsepower. You can add the hybrid system to that, which brings you up to 350 horsepower. This particular engine here, which is their 4.4-liter twin-turbo V8, good for 445 horsepower. There is also a 6-liter twin-turbo V12, good for 535 horsepower. And of course, the Alpina B7, which uses a modified version of this particular engine, but boosts the power up to 540 horsepower. All these engines are mated to a ZF8 speed automatic, and most of the engines are available with your choice of rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. The interior of the 7 Series is a great place to spend your time. Although honestly, I think that the BMW 6 Series Grand Coupe, which falls into a, a fairly similar price range as the 7 Series, has a much nicer and more attractive dashboard with that, uh, that very distinctive 6 Series swoosh going down here in leather. Now, of course, our particular 7 Series does have the hand-stitched leather dashboard and, of course, quantities of wood that would make even Jaguar blush. Now, because the Mercedes S-Class is getting a little bit old, this interior is much nicer than the Mercedes S-Class. And I'm, I'm really sorry about that, Mercedes fans, but honestly, the S-Class interior feels a bit cheap and a bit plasticky, even though it does have some nice-stitched lower dashboard parts that are not available in the BMW 7 Series. Compared to the Jaguar XJ, I think that I like the Jaguar styling. The quality is fairly competitive in terms of uh, actual parts quality interior and the feel between the 7 Series and the Jaguar XJ. But again, the Jaguar XJ does have some nice lower dashboard parts here, and we get a leather steering wheel uh, airbag cover in the XJ, which we can't get in the BMW 7 Series at any price, and that is something that you're looking at and touching every day that you're driving the car. The Germans are still figuring out what to do with American cup holders, so you can see they go here fairly high in the dash, and that means that if you have a larger soda, it blocks an awful lot of the controls here, and of course you can splash juice or whatever it is that you have into those controls fairly easily if you're not careful. Versus the 5 Series, the 7 Series is mostly about the rear passenger, especially in the L versions as we have here. Now our particular model is equipped with the optional rear comfort seats, which does provide a reclining rear throne here. As you can see, the range of motion on these rear seats is very good. It's, it's actually surprisingly good and about the highest that I've seen in any of these long wheelbase models. That includes the uh, Lexus LS600 HL, which does have a very nice reclining rear seat as well. Now, in addition to this large range of motion, this rear seat contorts in about the same number of motions as the front seat in a BMW sport seat equipped model. Now that means that this rear seat you can change the curvature of the seat back, you can change uh, the recline, the headrest, uh, you even have a massaging feature back here, and of course two position memory. The L's all about rear legroom. So you can see with this front seat moved all the way forward, which I can do fairly easily from my rear seat controls here, I can't even touch the back of the front seat. I have to lean forward to touch that. It means I can stretch out quite easily back here and I'm again six feet tall. The 7 Series scores 8 out of 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index because it's a fairly large, fairly deep trunk that's nicely carpeted and upholstered, but we do have these tubular trunk hinges that do cut down on our trunk space as well as cut down on my headroom and my legroom. Now we have the largest roller bag here you can carry on a domestic flight and as you can see the trunk opening is quite large making jamming those larger bags in the trunk fairly easy. We also have an optional power trunk closer which means getting in and out of the trunk fairly easy as well. 
When it comes to rear seat entertainment, BMW did something a little interesting. Instead of reinventing the wheel, what they've done back here is they've just given you an iDrive controller of your very own. And we have a right side and a left side control, which corresponds to the two different screens that are in the seat backs of the car. But interacting with the system is essentially exactly the same as interacting with iDrive from the front seat. We of course have the same shortcut buttons as the front, media, radio, telephone, and nav, and everything operates essentially the same way. You can even enter in destinations into the navigation system from the back seat here. Now the display in the rear isn't as high resolution as the one in the dash, but the system is incredibly responsive, just as you'd expect from iDrive. It of course does uh, satellite imagery overlay as well as traffic, complete destination entry from the back. Uh, we have our usual multimedia interface back here, radio, uh, we even have access to our BMW connected drive applications as well. The only flaw that we've noticed in the system is that you cannot control an iPhone or a USB device that's plugged into the front USB port from the rear here. If you're not a fan of slamming doors, the BMW 7 Series offers soft touch closing doors, which will close the door automatically like you can see there. Now I assume that you do that because you don't like the sound of slamming doors, not because you're too weak and feeble to actually just close the door normally. We have an entire video segment focusing on iDrive and exactly how it works. So I'm not going to go over too many details here in this 750 video, uh, but I'd like to cover a few features. First off, we have this extremely high resolution, very gorgeous screen here on the dashboard. This is honestly one of the best uh, infotainment displays that I have seen in any modern vehicle. And it's all controlled by the iDrive controller here, of course. Now this is essentially the latest version of iDrive, and you can tell because we have a media button over here instead of a CD button. And the media button uh, brings you over to your media devices. So we have our music collection, which is the CD based, or sorry, hard drive based uh, music collection system in this uh, iDrive system. Uh, you can rip your songs off of your CD or DVD, copy them off of USB, etc., onto the built in hard drive. We have our external devices, uh, which would include our iPhone via Bluetooth or via USB. There's also the usual BMW dock connector in the center console. We have an auxiliary input, of course. And of course, we have our rear entertainment zones in this particular model. As you can see, our 7 Series has the optional heads-up display. Well, it does display navigational information in full color like you would see in the BMW 3 Series. It doesn't display multimedia information. That's pretty much just shown on that central iDrive screen or on this large high-resolution LCD that's in the gauge cluster here. A major change for 2013 is the inclusion of voice commands in the iDrive system for browsing your music library, your USB or your iDevice here. The system isn't quite as elegant as Ford Sync honestly, but the iDevice uh, browsing interface in iDrive is much better, and the system is fully featured. You can search for songs, artists, playlists, genres, etc. You name it, you can search for it using the voice command function. It is very natural sounding, uh, and it worked very well in our tests. Now BMW describes the 7 Series construction as aluminum intensive, not all aluminum like the XJ or the Audi A8. And that means that the 7 Series is about 600 pounds heavier or so than a comparable Jaguar XJ model. And the Jaguar XJ Supersport 510 horsepower weighs just about 4,000 pounds, and our particular model here rings in around 4,600 or so. Compared to the Jaguar XJ, that extra weight is very noticeable out on the road, especially considering that our 750 Li has 245 with 19 inch tires in the back here. They're not terribly wide, really, compared to some of the offerings on the Jaguar XJ Supercharged and Supersport models. It's now time for perhaps the least important section in this review, the drive. Now, while that may sound sacrilegious, just bear me out for just a second here, because with any full-size luxury sedan, the overall experience can oftentimes be more about the back seat than the front seat. So in the front, we want, of course, a car that handles well, a car that's quiet, that's uh, easy to park, etc. It has all the electronic gadgets that you might want to keep you safe. Uh, but the experience is about everybody in the car in these full-size luxury sedans, the front seat passengers and the rear seat passengers, not just the driver and the way that the car drives. Acceleration in the 750 Li is extremely respectable at 4.95 seconds. And that's thanks to those 480 pound-feet of torque from that twin-turbo V8 under the hood. Now before you get too excited about that, the 760 is faster and of course a decent number of the Jaguar XJ flavors are faster than this as well, primarily because the XJ is lighter at around 4,000 pounds. Now in our tests, all V8 models of the Jaguar XJ, and that's the 385 horsepower naturally aspirated model, the 470 horsepower supercharged, and the 510 horsepower supercharged supersport model, were all faster 0-60 to 60 than the BMW 750 IL. 
Now, of course, the 760 is going to be faster than those because of its insane twin turbo V12, and Jaguar doesn't really have too much that competes with that other than the Super Sport. They'd like to tell you that the Super Sport is the competitor for the BMW 760, but honestly, a supercharged V8 engine versus a twin turbo V12, not quite the same thing in terms of uh, feel in, in the car. Now the the uh, twin turbo V12 is going to be much smoother. It's going to be a little bit faster than that Jaguar Super Sport, even though the Super Sport has a great exhaust note. But that's primarily because the Jaguar XJ, strangely enough, has turned into a driver's car, and the 7 Series is really more of a luxury limo kind of car, like you would have associated from Jaguar a few years ago. So in some ways, Jaguar and BMW have traded places in a way. Now the new XJ has a more direct feeling to its steering, uh, better grip from those larger tires, and of course, summer tires in most of the configurations available on the XJ versus these all seasons in the BMW 750. If you really care about the driving experience in a car, the Jaguar XJ is the better model. But the 7 Series has a nice amount of technology, especially in those rear seats, and it's extremely well done, extremely well integrated, and definitely my choice if you're going to be driven somewhere.